Okay, so anyway, um, Joachim is here on an, on an actually request that I asked him to actually join in um, to actually to actually discuss what it's like being in the vintage community and Marcintosh and so forth on actually his side of the world um, and to also maybe talk about some of the things that, that he sees in the pipeline and that are being worked on on that side. So for me not to take away all of the thunder from him, I will let him introduce himself and then go into a nice conversation. And then after a while, then we can have a question and answer time. Okay? Jakeem, it's all okay. yours. So, yeah, so where do you want to start with the background with who I am or just about to talk about? Well, just uh, let's say, I mean, um, introduce yourself, who you are, and then um, yep. what you do over there in the vintage side, what got you into this. Um, we see a very nice, great workshop behind you there. <laughs> um, yeah. So you must be doing some, some actually pretty decent stuff, so... Um, and also, what it's like being a collector in um, in actually Sweden. What is the access to things? How how are how is the how is the collecting over there? A, a, a lot more people. Yep. Something like that. So, yeah. Oh, cool. Let's uh, let's start with who I am. I'm uh, 42 years old. Uh, next week, and um, I have a master in electrical engineering. Uh, and currently, I work for, as the CFO for a company selling industrial diesel engines. So completely different field but I did my master with Saab with the cars uh, for control of electric drives so more into um, yeah power electronics development of power to electronics these days um, it's mostly about writing emails and uh, seeing in meetings but yeah that's <laughs> that's how it is <laughs> and um, I also worked uh, as a um, um, in, in a mechanical workshop so uh, hello, Flintlock. Um, so I'm pretty good also with yeah mechanical stuff like doing with I know my way um, around a lathe and a milling machine and yeah. And since about ten years, I've also been 3D printing stuff. Um, so I have three 3D printers. One is in the background here, and then I have another two. Uh, do different kinds. I also have a CNC machine. Uh, yeah, everything into like fabricating. And um, this uh, hobby of uh, of mine now with uh, with the Max, that's it's actually uh, I, I'd say it's a new old thing. Um, I used to do a lot of computers about 20 years ago, and then uh, not so much. I sort of got fed up it, uh, with it. Um, and then I was mo at that time mostly into PCs. Actually, yeah, I know it's it's a bad word. In <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was expecting that, but uh, but actually thanks to my lovely wife. Uh, she has always been into Max. Uh, she, uh, she she's had a, a, her whole life, uh, and because her father was a university professor in chemistry, and um, here in Sweden in the eighties, uh, all the university they had uh, they had Max, typically a plus, and then some yeah two Macintosh two two CI etc. Um, and Mac was kind of popular up until like the early nineties, and then it was a big drop. Uh, I'd say the whole power Mac, early power Macintosh era, it's just, yeah, it wasn't here. Everybody was using PCs at that time. And then it sort of came back with the, the G3 iMac, basically. Uh, it sold really, really well, and also the G4. So, and that's actually what, how the collection started, with, uh, with my father-in-law's old Macintosh Plus. It's not in the workshop, it's actually in the house. Uh, that's where I keep the nice stuff. Uh, out here is mostly, uh, yeah, stuff that I'm working on, so. Um, and, uh, and and his old G4 as well. Uh, unfortunately, we, in the um, yeah early 2000s, we threw a few Macs away. Uh, yeah, really bad. We didn't know better at that time. Yeah, it's really sad. Uh, <laughs> That was sad times. Uh, unfortunately, also we we threw away my wife's uh, old uh, LC3 that she uh, she got for her, uh, her, I think it was 14th birth or birthday or something like that. And she really missed that, so I decided, yeah, we need an LC3, and it wasn't working, so I repaired that and uh, yeah, got into more repairing stuff and got more Max, repairing even more uh, and repairing friends, uh, some friends Max, etc. Um, and so that's that's how it sort of grew from just a few computers to 
uh, quite a lot. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, yeah. The one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. I mean, they like yeah, they like company. These computers, you know? they, they should they shouldn't be left alone. So that's for sure. <laughs> but we have we are limited in space, uh, so we do have a house uh, and I do have a workshop. But we are limited in space, and uh, that's it's kind of a good and bad thing. I mean, otherwise, I mean, if you have more space, you tend to fill it. So this is getting pretty crowded. But that also means that you need to prioritize. So you keep the good stuff and sell off the rest. Because what really takes me off is, is repairing stuff. I've been doing that for a very long time and essentially anything. So I repair my wife's, uh, she's a researcher in breast cancer research. So some of her lab equipment I repair uh, when I have time. So, and um, yeah. And yeah, this when you have the electrical engineering degree, they're, they're like, hey, can you fix my insert random <laughs> electronic device here? <laughs> yeah, and also a lot of a lot of people they, they think you're an electrician. So so they, when they when they want something like uh, yeah they need a new outlet at our house they call you so yeah how should I connect this and I say call an electrician yeah well, that's what I did uh, well <laughs> sort of yeah but a completely, um, completely different field <laughs> yeah completely different field yeah but uh, it's hard for people to to understand so but. But Mac here is, um, it never was very, it was quite popular in the 80s uh, and uh, also early 2000s. And today it's, it has a strong user, user base like everywhere else. Uh, but collecting Macs here is, is kind of difficult because uh, you're quite limited to what comes out. Um, and uh, it can take time. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the prices tend to be very low. Uh, um, if I tell you what I've paid for some stuff, uh, you would be, yeah, you wouldn't believe me. Uh, I say uh, SE30 here, uh, when they come out, and that's typically like three, four times per year, and that, that one is really popular, and that ten, tend to go for like $150 uh, for a nice working example with uh, with mouse and keyboard, so. Wow. Uh, and you can also find like LCs, pizza boxes, they, they cost like... I, I bought one for 10, 10 bucks. Uh, it wasn't working, but just needed a recap. And uh, I, I thought for 10 bucks, I had to buy it. So, so I bought it. I already had three before, so I didn't need it. But it was fun to restore and repair. So, um, And of course, I realized that my good old soldering station, which is in the background, it's an old German one, it uh, wasn't enough. So uh, I had to buy a hotter gun. To, to also change, be able to change ships and stuff, and then I bought also desoldering gun, and um, and recently I started also doing um, yeah some circuit design again because I haven't done this this for the last fifteen years. Uh, before that, I did did some in, but then in power electronics and uh, control of power electronic drives. So uh, and we the software we used at that time is I don't think it exists anymore, but. Thanks to KiCad today, it's, um, I mean, I know the basics, sort of, so it's it's not the same, maybe same steep learning curve as or somebody who would be completely new to it, but it's still, yeah, kind of, yeah, you need to get used to it and, and learn it, so. 3D modeling I've been doing for the last 15 years, so that's, that's, uh, I'm, I'm fairly, fairly okay with, like, uh, I, I use Fusion at the, at the moment, I, before that I use FreeCAD. Um, uh, before that uh, inventor, but but now uh, I, I like Fusion because it's it's, uh, it's yeah free for private use, so it works works well. Um, and I have some projects that are ongoing; they're on the desk here. So um, this one here is maybe we're not allowed to show this. Will? No, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, yeah. So this here is uh, is a product that me and Will and, and Jake. Um, is, is working on this this is actually a, it's a voltage tester so it's um, it's pretty simple you connect it using a DB19 connector uh, to the back of the machine and it will be directly here uh, this is just a prototype that I put together uh, and this will show you actually the voltages the the 12 volt the 5 volt and the minus 12 volts uh, when it's present uh, on a machine and it's quite handy so I have actually prepared a little bit, uh, and I have my 2CI here. 
Joe, this is why I needed a bunch of DB19 connectors, and, and we and we made our own. <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. <laughs> no, that's fine. It was hey, you make your own. It keeps the regular ones for the uh, for the kit jobs. That's right. Yeah. 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 No complaints. <laughs> Bing! Yeah, it sounds the same way here. Sorry, we don't have the. It doesn't play the the national anthem yet. But I mean, this is um, this is quite neat, I'd say, because yeah. this is one of the first thing you want to check. So, are we getting proper voltages? Then yeah, this was okay because this one I recapped. So nice. Yeah, uh, and actually, I thanks to this, I realized that not all machines have minus twelve volts. Um, at the um, at the floppy connector, so I thought uh, at first I thought my SE30 uh, was that the PSU was broken, so I ripped it apart and uh, yeah started measuring, and then I brought up the schematics of it and realized that the minus five volt is actually not connected to the uh, to the DB19 on it, but anyway it's still very useful. Um, because there you see everything which is which is sort of important. So the plan is to uh, to sell this as as little kits. Uh, that's why also we needed a, a cheaper solution for the DB19 connector. Because um, yeah. yeah, yeah, this this one is uh, yeah quite expensive, and I I understand why it's expensive. And, uh, and also the, this connector is is actually. Really weird because it's called DB19, but it, it's not really DB. The the yeah, pins the, here, the pin spacings are weird. Yeah, the, um, the pins themselves, they uh, they're actually the same as the DBs. Uh, they're one millimeter diameter and five millimeter going out. But the um, uh, the pitch here is actually 2.77 millimeters instead of the usual 2.54. So it's really a weird weird connector. Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, let's make a weird connector. So now and then, at the moment, I also have another project here. Uh, it's on the table here. Um, this is one of the things that I bought here, which you will probably fall off your chairs when I uh, when I tell you what I paid for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a a. a, a yeah, exactly. Uh, this is a Sonnet uh, LCPDS, uh, and I've learned that they are incredibly rare. Uh, this one, it fits the LC, LC2, and the Color Classic. And I got this here locally for $70. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I'll was pay nice. shipping to have it sent to the U.S. Yeah, <laughs> yeah get 10 more. I need 10 more. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and this, this actually is, um, it was more or less never used uh, and it's a very early one also because it has a podge wire up here and it has no serial on it so i think it's it's one of the early ones uh, they made or maybe they didn't made it but then i reached out to um, another guy here in the community um, in germany uh paul is uh, yeah. copying quite a, quite a few yeah. cards and asked if he was interested in making these uh, and uh, he was very interested so um he copied it and uh he sent me empty boards uh, or uh, yeah two of them as thank you for letting me borrow the board i'm not sure if he will release it or not but um yeah i, I think at some point he will so but anyway i'm that's that's one thing that i'm building at the moment i'm building a few of these nice. um putting them together this one uh, i realized today that it, it has i, I will yeah, that's not a problem here. Like for me, because you know we're in the European Union and we have to pay uh, tax, uh, and in Sweden we'll have to pay a lot of tax. So if I want to buy something, then some countries they don't ship here at all, so it's a bit problematic. And uh, also I have to pay VAT when it arrives here. So those connectors here, uh, they're not fourteen dollars here; they're more like twenty after VAT and everything. So. Uh, and my problem was actually getting the um, uh, the PGA socket, uh, 
and I, I couldn't find it here locally. So I had to wait for that for uh, yeah quite some time to get from uh, get over from the U.S. and so. Uh, and then when I tried this card with the, uh, it would uh, it gave me chime and everything, so it was uh, was fairly okay. Uh, but it wouldn't boot. Uh, it would hang on the Happy Macintosh, and I think it's because of the. I'm having some issues with the clock generator because I put um, um, a 66 megahertz uh, clock generator here, and I think the uh, the chip only uh, only can do 50. So I've got to try with a new clock generator. Uh, that's a price for later. But one issue with this card is is this little chip here. Uh, this one uses. Uh, a Silent XE C3030, uh, which was quite common at uh, this era of cards, uh, and it uses it's a FPGA, uh, but it it has um, the industrialization chip is not built into the, the uh, FPGA itself as it is today. So instead, you have this chip here, which actually contains the bitstream. So this one, each time you start the card, it will configure the 3030 uh, to yeah whatever it's supposed to do. And these little bastards here uh, are quite expensive, they're like around $10, uh, and very difficult to program. You need a very old uh, programmer called Galeb, uh, which can do them, because you need a 28 volt feed to program them. And then you can only program them one time, then the chip uh, is locked. So it makes this product a little bit difficult, but uh, I think I like setting up challenges for myself, and I didn't know anything about doing uh, surface mounted chips uh, a few months ago uh, and now I have a sort of working card so I think I'm making a little bit of progress mm -hmm. like Captain Kirk said we learn by doing exactly so that's that's the best way and and by doing mistakes so, <laughs> so. Um, yeah that's interesting to see that card uh, be, it'll be it'll be nice if bull actually lets th lets that out or just make or just makes it available to purchase yeah, I think you will. Uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, doing uh, an update to it and also add, because if you have this one in the machine, uh, you're blocking the only um, connectivity. And it would be nice if you could also have like uh, Ethernet uh, on the same card. Mm -hmm. I know he has been uh, looking into, because there was um, one called hey, This is the. Yeah, yeah they, I just got all this card for the SC30 that integrates uh, Ethernet onto the adapter board. Which is yeah, that's uh, the Razer card. Yeah, I also have right. that in my SA30. That's that's really nice. Uh, I just got that from Germany. It took forever for DHL to deliver it, but I'm planning to put it yeah. in the machine this week. Yeah, it's it's a little bit. Uh, um, I had some issues to getting everything up and running. Uh, you need to have the right drivers for the accelerator. Well, right now I've got the card. I don't remember who made it. It was Sony in Japan made it. That doesn't have the Ethernet on it, and I've got it working with the um, the O40 card. It's a yep. Daystar, and I've got it working with the Rasterops color video card at the, at the same oh, time. But I also wanted Ethernet, so now I'm I'm redoing again. But yeah, I, I love how he put the the back connector with the video and the Ethernet on it, which is one of the big reasons why I couldn't do that before. Yeah, yeah, it's great, and it's also the, you also have this extra. Oh. Oh, oh, he froze. Froze. Uh -oh. Maybe he's using Welcome one of Bowler's new Ethernet cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think he's using Dave's in it. Dave's in the rear. Yeah, I think I fixed my. Uh, yeah, sorry. There we go. There, there you are. are. Okay, you're back. We got you yeah, back. sorry. Okay. I have some issues here with our fiber. So, no, I have um, I have that machine here also, the um, the SE30, but it's. Um, um, it's in the house at the moment. Otherwise, I could have showed it because uh, I got it up and working. Uh, also, with the I have the Micromac um, 040 accelerator in it. That one came uh, in a 2CI I bought. Yeah, the one I showed before. Uh, that one had a, it was used here for um, uh, for research purpose. Uh, I think so. It came with um, with also some very weird uh, image grabber cards. So I have two of those, one for uh, black and white, the one for color. I have never used them, so I don't know how they work. But uh, <laughs> I found a 2CX that had a, a TV tuner card in it that actually had a speaker on the card because that's how it played the TV audio. And then the same machine had a had a composite video out card. 
it was like wow. somebody was doing a lot of crazy video stuff on a 2x and what was funny is that the hard drive worked once and the, and what i always do is when i get a machine like that i hook a blue scuzzy or scuzzy to sd up to it so that if it boots i can immediately back it up so i was able to get all the software that went with those cards um oh. because i backed it up and then the second boot it the machine failed or the hard drive failed yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, so you got pretty luck, pretty luck there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing here with this uh, the two CI. It probably had all the drivers and everything, but uh, since it was used for some kind of research, and I guess uh, it was some kind of military research or something, because he was not allowed to give the um, the hard drive because there was yeah for some reason, which was uh, a bit sad because it's different. It's, uh, I think this one is from NIH or something, so it's uh, it's really difficult to find drivers for it. But I'm gonna try it. At, um... uh -huh, okay. To say of of the uh, which one do you mean, Flintlock? The um, the image driver card or or the meter or the meter card? Uh, let's see what he says. He'll say yeah. it in the text. So, okay, you got a couple more things sitting there, or? No, not that I wanted to show. Uh, okay. That was basically a yeah, quick introduction. Uh-huh, okay. Welcome well, to It's funny that you found the, uh, yeah, thank you. the card in a GCI, because where I got my Daystar card was actually in a GCI. It was in a sort of junk pile at, at the computer festival. And it was at the very bottom of a pile, and it had a sticker on the front that said uh, Daystar. And I'm like, and Garth was there with me, and we're like, there's no way... That upgrade is still in that. So we unburied the whole pile to get to this one yep. bottom. And I, I popped the lid, and the O40 card is still sitting in there. Oh, that's nice. And uh, the whole TCI was, I think it was 50 bucks. Oh, that's really, really <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> find, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can feel how difficult it is for you to actually get products and items. I mean, like, you know, I am international, so on a, so on yeah. a, small, on a small little island, and here I can't buy anything. I mean, I no, no, no. I will never find any old classic Macs here or anything. So, <laughs> yeah. So I have to bring all of mine in from the U.S. and all my parts. I got to ship in from Dig from like a DigiKey Mouser, and I got to pay higher shipping. I got to pay import duty and yep. all that stuff. So, quite a few things. So yes, that's understandable. Um, but but at least you I mean you may have you probably have other collectors over there too in the in the country. Oh yeah, we actually have. Uh, I have one uh, in the office actually. The uh... <laughs> It was just by coincidence we started talking one day, and it turned out the. Uh, but he he likes the the compacts, so yes, um, basically all of them. Uh, and then I have another one also here in the um, in the same town. Uh, so the three of us we sort of, uh, yeah, do some stuff together. Uh, but then the problem is that Sweden is fairly undensely populated. Let's put it like this. So uh, it's it's quite far. Uh, they do have some meetups. There's one next weekend, but then it's in, um, it's like 500 kilometers to drive, mm -hmm. so like 350 miles, which is just too long. So yeah. wouldn't do that for the weekend. So, and that that I'm sort of missing a little bit. That would be nice to have, um, yeah, some meetups and meet other people. Oh, accelerator car we'll talk. Yeah, it is actually available already for the two CI. Uh, oh, he made a clone also for the. Um, uh, the o Ma Micro Mac O40. Yeah, I think you can, if you reach out to him on uh, on 68K, you could probably still buy them. A few months ago, he was selling them at least. Uh, because, yeah, maybe also on Tinker Different. I don't know if he's on Tinker Different. He's usually on, on 68K. But, he's, he is on both of them, yeah. Yeah. yeah he's uh, also on Discord. I got him on Discord, was the way I finally got him to respond yeah. to the chat. Yeah, it can be difficult to reach. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyone, anyone in the group or in the chat have questions to send? Um, feel free to go ahead. Send me some Swedish meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> you can get those at IKEA, you know. Oh, that's yeah. right. It's only it's been only thirty five minutes away. I'll see you guys in half an hour. <laughs> so bring it up for everybody. But but true story. We actually we sometimes we pack the whole family and go to IKEA and have dinner. So because it's it's really cheap. So. <laughs> like eighteen dollars. Yeah, and it's well, good. It's so, yeah. It was only about five miles away. We would go down to IKEA and just spend the day there. Yeah. 
You can probably spend a lifetime there. <laughs> so. Just, just, you hide, yeah, you hide one of the displays when they close the store. Yeah, yeah so, there, there's one other person in the chat. Everything is Broken Garage that also lives on the island. Um, he is in the new, in actually, New Ashley, Finland. Um, Newfoundland. New, uh, new Ashley, Foundland, yeah, sorry. He's way up there in Canada somewhere. Finland. So he also has the same issues um, with the densely populated and all that. So, yeah. yeah. But um, but anyone else in there? Anyone? Uh, well, I I I think it's really cool that this interest is, uh, you know, with, with Max and with of course with Margin Tosh going on. Um, but it's it's really nice that uh, our European friends are into it just as much as we are. Uh, and and it's, it's basically, it's a worldwide thing. It's fantastic. I mean, we, it's our mission when we do these streams, you know, we're all working on different stuff. We try to keep all this stuff out of landfills so the people that come after us will enjoy it too. And it's great oh, yeah. that we have a lot of smart people like yourself that are reverse engineering a lot of this stuff. And some of these accelerator cards uh, are being, uh, a lot more modernized. They work on a wider variety of, of machines, which is fantastic. I mean, like, for example, uh, I have a newer tech uh, 2.1 gigahertz CPU card in my G4 Cube. And, yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. So, and that, that's that's a screamer for that machine. Uh, oh, yeah. I wish there was a way to uh, make the bus speed faster to, to get more appreciation out of it. But, you know, it, it it's, yeah. uh, it's the machine waiting on the processor, or, or, or vice versa, oh, yeah. the processor is waiting on the machine. But, but uh, are you are you still fan loss with that design, or are you put a fan in there? Or? Uh, yeah, my I have a uh, actually I have a CNC fan regulator in it. I saw yep. that on YouTube, and so I have a 12 volt base fan in it. And so there's a there's a external uh, thermometer, and I got it underneath the CPU. So when it gets up to 89 degrees, the fan turns on, and then as it gets hotter, it'll ramp all the way up. And but it it keeps it nice and cool. It does not get hot at all, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. It's actually speaking of fans. It's actually um, that's that's also an idea I had for uh, for a project uh, to do um, a, a cooler card, which you could plug into the Nubus. Uh, on yeah, especially the two FX. I have one uh, one Macintosh two and one two FX, and both have the um, the Macintosh two uh, PSU, and it it sounds like a jet engine uh, when it's running. So <laughs> so so actually, I wanted to to swap that out because just cooling the PSU would be enough with uh, with just a big sized um, slow running fan, and then have a, a car which would work on demand. Uh, which would be powered from the the new bus, uh, and then you would put like a sensor on the CPU, and just control the fan by that. So it would be fairly simple to do. Uh, it's just yeah, need to find the time for it. Yeah, that's that's it. like I said. It's great that uh, people are coming up with the, these great ideas that uh, were probably never even thought of back in the day. You know. Um, no, and uh, I, I also find it incredibly impressive how people are making now new games and stuff also for the old machines because it's so easy to set up a virtual machine today uh, i also have a virtual machine running on my my modern mac uh, with cheap shaver and uh, i use that um to i can do ethernet to uh, to my other machines to the really old real old machines uh, or i can just like yeah Ow. create image files and so on and um that's, sorry that's i really, myself Oh, yeah. Soldering, soldering. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm replacing a reefer cap and I just got the wrong spot. Sorry, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, Adam turned on his actually Lisa for the first time in a long time and, and, and the and the actually reefer and the power supply went up in smokes, but um, we missed that on the video. <laughs> I, anyway. So, it lingers but, but yeah, I mean, there is a lot of new things being made, and and I mean, some of, some of these are, I mean, look at that, look at actually, look at actually, blue actually scuzzy, 
look at yeah. look at all these other devices that have been made. Um, recently, I bought the actually retro retro chip tester, which is great because I have a lot of the old memory for the Apple IIs and Apple threes, and testing them and knowing if they're good or bad is great to know. Uh, because they they are actually hard to find. Those chips can cost. So to to know that it's still good is really is is really a benefit. Um, you've got actually Wi-Fi adapters now that are coming out for some of these. Look at look look at actually FujiNet um, and things like that. I mean, some of these machines are getting a completely new actually life. As I stare oh, at yeah. the FujiNet uh, board sitting on my desk right now, <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can put my Apple II over Wi-Fi. It's just insane to me. But yeah, so there there are actually a lot of nice things out there, and a lot of a lot of new things being being made by by the actually by the actually community. I mean, this is not really a big company making a lot of these things. It, it, it is the actually community. Yeah, I mean, there's. Uh, one thing is, of course, the tools we have today is, is way better. I mean, doing uh, doing CAD work in the early 90s was yeah maybe not the most fun it's thing. Like a $15,000 program in order to do it, and then a $20,000 computer to run it. Yeah. 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 And, and you can do better on those. Trying to make your own PCBs. Yeah, well, that's you know, now, now, now we can design it with with actually KiCad and and actually Easy AD, Easy EDA and all these other ones, and then just send oh, yeah. the models to one of the manufacturers, and they make it, and then a couple of weeks later you actually have it. I mean that's just amazing. Uh, yeah. it's, not, it's not something we had not not even five five or ten years ago really. When, uh, well, when I was studying a uh, long time ago, we we made our own circuit boards. So we had it in the basement, we had tanks and everything, and you would like print it on. Um, uh, on this um, uh, OH paper, and then you would uh, use UV light, expose it, and then you would have to solder it. So you wow. would try to fit everything on, on uh, just one layer, uh, because that's the easiest thing to do, because otherwise you had to, to line them up and, and make your own BS and everything. So, But now, I mean, with like uh, these companies like JLC and so on, it, it's short delivery time, and you get professional boards, which looks mm -hmm. just fantastic. And then, system. not to add to the mix, I mean, actually, 3D printing and all this other stuff, too, that has really made oh, yeah. a big difference. I mean, look at Joe. He's got one of the, actually, bamboo printers, and, I mean, he's in love with that machine. Um, yep. Joe? <laughs> <laughs> it's something. What What was it? Printing out those brackets used to take you 11 hours, and now you do them in, actually, three? Yeah, hold on. I'm like way across the shop. Yeah, he's at a shipping center on top of, on top of his washer dryer. Probably. Yeah, it's <laughs> a big operation. Yeah, I mean, 3D printing is just crazy now. Yeah, it used to take like six hours to print six blue SCSI brackets. Now I can do it in an hour and a half. Yeah, that's, that's pretty it. cool. You yeah. click a button in the machine, just like it's like a refrigerator. You open up, light yeah. turns on. You don't know why, but there's prints in there. It's like okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's so really all amazing. of that, and I mean, recently I've seen some devices that I mean, you can buy for yourself, but they're not top notch yet. That will actually make your own circuit boards for you. Oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah. I mean, they're not the best, they're not the high quality, but I mean, at least at least you can make a, you can make a prototype. Okay, yeah. and, and if you make a mistake in that, you can change it, reprint it again. Well, not print it, but I mean, re actually carve it because it's really carving it out the copper. So oh, it's I mean, like the old way where we used to etch the carpet. The carpet yeah. The copper. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, within a couple of years, we may be seeing we may be seeing devices that you can buy for your home and and you can make your own PCBs. Little desktop PCB makers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they already have the Lumen PC Lumen uh, PMP a pick and place machine for like seven uh, seventeen hundred bucks, where mm -hmm. you can do oh six oh eight size good. stuff. Yeah. To make the blue scuzzy and the bracket all in one go. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so so there are there are a lot of options and and things, and it will only get better. I think. I mean, I mean, I mean, micro microcontrollers. Look at look at the actually look at the actually Pico and the, and the blue pill and the actually ESPs and all these other ones. AT Tiny now replacing the actually RTC chip. Yeah. I mean, there's just some amazing things coming out. Yes. See, so. So having actually skilled people in that to actually reverse engineer some more of some more of these chips uh, that are that are obsolete and some of these boards is really is would be really amazing. 
So, yeah, it would be interesting to see if uh, how because at the moment we're quite close to to like building a complete SE30, for instance, or LC. But there are of course some chips like the sound chip uh, and some of these uh, VLSI chip, chips. It would be interesting to see if in the near future if they're uh, same like similar service as, as this JLC where you can get circuit boards, where you can also get like custom made chips uh, at a reasonable price. I'm not sure if that it's coming, but that would be a dream of mine. So you could like design a new chip and get yeah five or fifty or whatever the minimum order quantity would be. But uh, that would be really amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just it just amazes me uh, the, the, the things that I see that are being developed and it didn't even exist a year ago. It's just amazing. Yeah. Now, what about over there? Has the uh, now some of the guys that some some of y'all in the in this in this in this stream may laugh. U.S. and Canada, Naboo has taken over like crazy. How is it over there in Sweden, or do you even know what it is? Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Someone, someone want to want to actually explain that like Naboo? <laughs> someone want to actually explain it? I can uh, explain it, or Joe can. Yeah, Naboo basically was this mid-80s uh, concept started by a small computer company in uh, Canada. I believe it was, they were in Ottawa or Toronto, somewhere in that area. Oh, Ottawa. But the idea was a computer that was connected via a cable modem to a central office, and you All could right. download your applications over this, over this network instead of mm. having local media. And... It was like kind of a pre-internet interconnected system. You, similar system in Europe might be like Minitel. Um, yeah. And uh, it was actually way ahead of its time. And what happened was it didn't really catch on, but all this inventory that they built for this network just kind of sat around. And about okay. six months ago, um, it was, I don't know, rediscovered. And they started putting them on the internet or on uh, eBay, and then it was like everybody's got to have one now because it's this weird piece <laughs> of Canadian computing history. Okay. So yeah. now we all have a uh, Nabu, and we all like we chat with each other on them and connect them to the internet and do crazy right. things. <laughs> thing is, yeah, why not? Recreated, they, they recreated the online network that would have been on your cable system, so you can actually use all that original software. And now on top of that, they're writing new software that you can either yep. load over the internet or. Locally, from you know PC or Raspberry or whatever you hook up to it. Yeah, yeah. So you can, yeah I mean, but it's new hardware from 40 years ago, which is also yeah. amazing. Oh, that's that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, you, you do need to use a computer as a gateway that's connected to the internet, and then and then the netboot is connected to that, and that machine is running the actually gateway software. Yeah. Will then, which will then, which will then make the connection available. So, it's all like in the course of like, what was it like, okay. sixty days? They completely reverse engineered the entire stack, and they were like, "Here you go." Yeah, amazing oh, yeah. work. Amazing work was actually done with it, and even some of the actually original creators or the original developers are actually yeah, they got involved. And he's like, "Here, here's a dump of the entire software repository. Have fun. <laughs> Enjoy yourself." <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, he, he's he's not in here now, but uh, Sean from uh, Geek of Social Skills, he's been very instrumental. Oh yeah, in, he's uh, been writing a, code, huge. and uh, he has this thing where he's actually when people get a Nabu, you send the serial number to him because he's keeping track of where all these machines are showing up all over the world. Oh, and where they're going? Pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And if you have a YouTube channel, he'll put the link there so it goes right to your yeah. channel. But other than that, he doesn't take your, he doesn't take your personal information. But it's no. just really neat, yeah. the, the stuff that he's done. They're getting ready to release a bunch of other stuff. Um, he's given me some beta software to try out uh, and Garth on a couple on the Mac line. Um, but uh, we're still getting the bugs out of it to, to just plug it into the back of the Mac and, and being able to launch and get into the uh, Nambu uh, software. And there's even additional hardware being being actually developed. Wow. I mean that you can connect a floppy drive to it and other boards and all that too. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a nice it's a nice thing. But yeah. some people want it just to actually salvage parts because th that keyboard is very is very uses the what Alps keys. Yep. Yeah, ah, Alps, right? yeah. Which is the same as uh, Macintosh 128 and some. Yes, I want to have Apple twos. Yeah. yeah. 
All I got to say is somebody better develop a SCSI card for the thing so I can sell blue SCSI. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got a serial card going and a fuck going. No, and it's not something it's not something expensive from the states. I mean, shipping in the states was what? And buying it and shipping it was, was more than the device. One hundred and twenty nine dollars or something like that. Yeah, I think it was sixty bucks when, I, when it was That's first out. Cool. He was only charging sixty bucks. No, so, I actually have one coming. I I should get it next. I should get it this week. Ahead, by the end of this week. I, sh I should have it, so I'll be the first one. The first one, and that she came in Ireland. <laughs> Probably the only one, but yep. No, no, no. <laughs> I was I, just I'm, gonna say it. No, well, I'm trying to convince Luke, who who is a, who is the young person down here. He is in the channel right now. He is watching. I'm I'm trying uh, to convince him to buy one also. That way, then I I won't I won't be alone. Luke, get an Abu. Joe said so. No, I know what I know when you get it, it turns out, but that port is blocked. So, <laughs> so you can just you can chat with each other, but nothing else. So yeah, there's, but, there's only two thousand of these machines. Yeah, uh, um, but the thing is that so all of the perfect. all of the actually retro games from the eighties are they're actually on there, and it's almost and it's a lot of it looks looks like an actually exact exact replica. That's exact, really cool. exact, um, exact, um, exact version of the game and all that. So everyone yeah. is playing Pac-Man and and actually and actually Galaga and all that. So they got yeah. CPM running on it too now. Yeah, and see the upside with it because it's got the a combination of the Z80 and the TMS9918. You can port a, a buttload of software from other systems, just almost like copy paste. It'll just run on it. So it's it's really cool. And we had, speak of the devil, we had Sean here. Um, oh, Sean is in now? Yeah. Uh, uh, Trina, are you still there? I think Trina stepped away. I hope she doesn't get mad. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, if, you need to boot, if you need to boot somebody, you can boot me. That's fine. I got, I got him in there. There we go. Okay. Hey, Sean. Hey, did somebody say Naboo? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nobody said that. No. <laughs> so anyway, yes, we have uh, a, a gentleman all the way from Sweden here, and he, they, they're not familiar with, or at least he's not, uh, with the Nabu craze that's going on nope. out here. It's I've like that, that episode of Star Trek well. where they brought back that toy that kind of really killed <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the trouble. Yeah, the trouble with tribbles. <laughs> so there's somebody from Sweden. Well, let me... There's yeah, actually some... There are some Naboos in Sweden. I just put a link in the, uh, the chat. Oh. oh, that's cool. So, so, th so they are uh, reaching Switzerland. Well, so that's, 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 that's a different country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always make jokes about that, even with with the Swiss guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're the ones in the middle with all the banks. So we're the ones up in the north with all, with all the moose. So, yeah. Uh, At reindeers. So. Hey, Dave, I just fixed another 2E. So, <laughs> yeah. so but, but anyway, I mean, right back. It's, if you it's want, not, if you, not equal Switzerland. So, I mean, Joachim, if you want to look up Nabu and see, it may be something you may want to, you, that you may want to play with it and try. So it's a yeah, little sure. space. I, but uh, anyway. Yeah, I'll check it out. So, Otherwise, uh, here we have in the 1980s there was a, a local made computer called ABC80. Uh, it was uh, really popular. It was made by Luxor, and uh, it was sort of uh, yeah, similar to like TRS80. Um, and uh, it had a, uh, but it was it was only it was based on the Scilog set set uh, processor. And yeah. uh, I've never seen it outside of Sweden. Yeah, maybe in some museums, but it's it was really a local made. And I think at that time, yeah, same as now, we wanted to do everything ourselves. Uh, and I guess it was like the military. They said, okay, we need this, uh, or we need some kind of computer. And then they realized that, okay, yeah, better probably better just buy something off the, uh, off the street. But they are quite popular here and, and quite expensive also. You have to pay like three, four hundred dollars for uh, for a working one. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a nice link there. So it's also uh, also like really weird stuff. So I don't have one of those. Um, I sort of decided just to keep it at max. One of my friends has got one. Uh, he's, he also has lots of old PCs and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, anyway, um, I mean, here you are, and um, you, thank you for joining us here today. Um, oh, absolutely. This here, absolutely. This, this here stream is done every, every Sunday. It's a way that uh, um, us, us, actually, us actually collectors, geeks, or whatever you want to call us here, get together and chat about things and pick things. Yep. Um, um, there is there is a Discord channel also hosted um, that someone can send you. The, well, I can send you an actually invite on it. Yeah, you can join it if you wish. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that way, then you can always reach anyone that's here yeah. and see what's being talked about. There are a lot more people oh, in the Discord okay. that are always talking yeah. to them. So, jcm-1.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Joe is Joe is Joe Joe is Joe. Let's just leave it that way. I'm not gonna. <laughs> so I mean, I think we have I think we have a very a, a very nice actually community group here of people. Um, some of there's a lot that are not in this channel right now that that are just in the chat. Um, so um, we always share things around. So. Um, Oh yeah, I mean, there are people. There are people all over the world. I mean, you 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 got JDW in Japan. You got um, what's his name, Kato, or that's also Japan. You got Bruce. Yeah, that's that's that, that is actually Australia. By the way, Bruce actually did an awesome video last night or early this morning. He was in a very good mood. Let's just say it that. Way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so yes, I mean it's it's a it's a fun group and and. And like me, I I do a lot of I do a lot of rebuilding and repairs, um, design. I'm just now getting into, and and you see one of you see some of the stuff that we're that we're working on, um, that we're working on together and so forth. So um, there are a few more things that we're working on that we have coming out for the rest of y'all to know. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean I don't have much else, so I don't know if anyone else has anything to say or add or ask. Yeah, someone well, has uh, a question here. Yeah, I believe Skazis. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, someone had uh, a question. The question is, uh, do you have any future projects you can hint at? Um, not really that I can show at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so, there might be something, but uh, um, yeah, of course I have other stuff here laying around. I still need to to fix some of my machines that are broken, so. Um, but um, this is basically what I'm working on. It will take some more time. Uh, but doing also a case uh, for this one. Uh, and yeah, the DB19 connector, you know, we're going to make a new 3D printed, uh, printable version of that. Uh, uh, I've seen the DB19 from um, Apple II or A2 Heaven. And I think it's in it's like a PCB or something like that. Type of, yeah. Yeah, it's oh, like a no, PCB that's, with pins, yeah. and it, yeah, it's it's a weird connector. It doesn't have a shroud around it. It just has the 19 pins on the PCB. Yeah, and then on the other I, side, for what that's used for, it's got an IDC 20. I thought about doing that, but <clears throat> I don't like to have exposed pins. Um, yeah, because it's if you drop weird. something in, and uh, especially because you have you have both a 12 uh, and a 5 volt there, and if you like short that's them out, true. there it's, you're gonna kind of destroy stuff. Now, yeah, I've used that connector on a spot mm. where I permanently leave it on, so it's not a deal, big deal there, but for where I'm using them, where I'm connecting and disconnecting, yeah. I've been scavenging up uh, like real old stock uh, DB19s. Oh, that's nice. Because that was like yeah. 10,000 made. Um, well, for my uses, it's like seven or eight. So I, it's okay. Kind of yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, because I, I know it, it was reverse engineered, and then I got somebody in China to make them. But I think they, in the end, they turned out quite expensive anyway, because you were probably, yeah. I mean, you have well, to pay a higher price for that. So. Well, like big mess of wires, every time you buy a, um, a floppy emu or a Yellowstone card, you get either one or two of those connectors in that setup. Yeah. And that's probably one of the significant costs of the units. Yeah. The rest of it is just PCB chips and, and, and little tiny OLED. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were looking at, at those connectors, and I mean, to buy them at other people's selling price was like anywhere from 12 to $14 a piece, and, and we just couldn't do that. If we wanted to make this actually device that was very inexpensive, 
for us for the fellow collectors to actually build you need to have you can't have such an actually expensive connector there right okay yeah. because i mean that would have made a kit product almost actually 30 dollars, and that would have been crazy well joe has the db19 on his y cable project I don't know yeah it but it's it's you know it's i mean there is a limited supply of them. So, I mean, for those that really need it, uh, let them have it, let them use it. And then that, that's what we felt yeah. that it was better for us to kind of design yeah. our own here. Yeah. Because I also have a is, special um, magic source where I can get them for a buck 50 piece. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's where <laughs> I don't want to treat, I don't, I don't want to treat that. Uh, Did sword. you guys know that Joe has a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> That's our right. Transporters, time machines. I got your hookup, baby. Whatever you do, don't go to 2020. So. No. So <laughs> no. Well, we just felt making our own actually DB plug and putting in some pins yeah. because really for that device that we've developed, you only need you only need really four pins, but it's got some extra just for actually just for actually yeah, just to hold the the board. So yeah. so and really, it's not something that's going to stay connected. I mean, you just plug it in, yeah. do your test, and take it out. So. I agree for that application. That's perfect. It's, so it's a test frame. It doesn't need to be all like, look, it's all fancy and pretty. It has screws and it plugs in. And exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Pointless. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but that was why I, I thought about do, doing also the PCB version, but then I didn't like the exposed pins. So that's, yeah. Yeah, that's how we came up with the 3D printable ID instead. So I just well, using ground, DB yeah. pins because you can buy, there's some, there's some military specification for the uh, DB connectors, and you can buy those. Uh, I don't think Mouser has them, but um, at least uh, Distrolec, uh, they have them. And, and for those, you, have, you always have loose pins. So that's where we're getting the pins. That's from the, the mil spec uh, DB9, DB15 connectors. Uh, and since those pins are the same for the, the DB19, it was just, just about making the shroud and, um, and the printable. And I anyway had had modeled the the, DB, the whole DB19 connector, uh, so I had that as a step file, and just redoing that into something which was printable was was fairly straightforward. Who is strangling a dog in the background? What is that noise? Ah, uh, it's not me. <laughs> Adam, are you like rearranging your bat your 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 basement again? And nothing. Okay. Well, whoever no, it stops, so anyway, did, okay. did it stop? It might be recording in the background, like on the other side of the house. Well, I was going to suggest uh, for these DB19 connectors, uh, Jeff Burt, uh, he got with, uh, I can't remember the uh, the Canadian guy's name, but he, uh, those two guys got together and designed, uh, you know, came out with their DB23 connector for the video, uh, for the video of the Amigas. Oh, yep. yes, as I stare up at my, like, 20 of them that I ordered when they came out on Kickstarter, because yes. And uh, they went with a Chinese manufacturer. I don't know who they went with, but uh, their connectors sell, just the connector itself sells for six bucks a piece. So maybe they good. have maybe they have some kind of secret sauce that you know, they'd be willing to share. Yeah. And typically, the problem with the Chinese suppliers is that they usually have quite high MOQ. So you typically need to order like ten thousand or something like that. Yeah. And I'm not sure if we could if we could sell ten thousand connectors. <laughs> so, well, ten thousand, maybe. <laughs> Joe, uh, do you want to buy nine and uh, nine and uh, nine thousand nine uh, nine hundred and let's see fifty? <laughs> sure, I will sell them on acm onecom in bulk for five dollars a piece. <laughs> Quite a bargain. Yeah. Today. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. The but, other problem is finding a, a good Chinese supplier because you, typically you, you get a sample uh, at like ten pieces and they look great, and then you get you get the other nine thousand nine hundred ninety and they look like rubbish, and you have to throw like three quarters away. So. Yeah, there is that, but that's what they did. Is they, you know, it, it took them quite a while to get it get it right, but they did it. Yeah. And I got one of the, um, I got one of those DB23 connectors on a device that cost me fifty dollars from uh, Canada. But what it does, what it, what that device is, I know a uh, side subject, but it's an RGB. It connects to the uh, RGB video on the Amiga 500 and gives me, uh, you know, 
the red, green, and blue, you know, component uh, video. Yeah. But anyway, uh, back on the topic of ma of uh, Marchintosh, I have an idea for uh, you and uh, who's the guy in Germany? Bol? Bully? Yeah. Like yeah, Bol, yeah. Okay. I'm not smart enough to do this, so I'll give this idea to you guys. A VGA card for the PDS slot. You decide what computer. Yeah, that would be cool. Especially for those of us who have the, uh, the appropriate Macintosh with that uh, PDS in it, and yep. want to uh, get a straight, you know, straight signal out of the Macintosh for a video or something. You mean for like the SE30 to get our external? Yes, something like that, yeah. or LC3 or whatever. They are working on a on a grayscale card, uh, but I was meant to um, <coughs> for the internal. Uh, so, so instead of getting black and white, you would actually get an internal grayscale. So, but I haven't seen um, anyone doing the um, a VGA card. I would love to have it, but um, I think it's it's difficult to find compatible chips. Right. That's um, yeah. Uh, first, you need the easiest way is always to find something to clone, but then you need to find something which also has chips which are available and doesn't cost a fortune. So, but I, it's it's really a great idea. Uh, I would love it. Yeah, the newest, like Bacchus is saying, the newest VGA that would also be really nice. Well, if that exists, and you can clone it. Yeah. That's probably doable. I think I'm a clone now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more things getting cloned, because some, um, I mean, some of the other machines, um, they've practically cloned everything, and the people are busy moving away from those onto, onto the apples now. So, because, I mean, like on the Commodore, on the Amiga, just about everything has been cloned and done. Mm. Especially the C64. Good God. Yeah, there's everything. You can build a new one. Yeah, yeah run the ground up from okay. nothing to now, brand new. You can probably run that on an Ashley ESP32 by now, but anyway. Um, with just a couple yeah, things connected to it. <laughs> but yeah, it's not the same. But 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, there'll be more coming. I'm 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 very sure of that. Yeah, uh, there is one thing I that I would personally like to clone, but I don't have the original to clone from, which would be the original Macintosh keyboard that ha that took the RJ12 connector. Mm. Yeah. That's that's my crusade. Is I'm going. I want to clone every keyboard I can get my hands on that isn't PS2 or USB or ADB. You you mean the original one for without the the numpad? Exactly. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, um, that that's the one for the plus. Uh, well, sorry for the 128 and the 512. Just yeah, the plus has with the uh, with the, the plus one has the keypad on it. The yeah. pad. I have multiple examples of both of those keywords. Oh, oh yeah. I, so so so, what are you looking for? Just 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 the actually TB, just the just, just the board or the whole key and everything. Uh, the whole thing would be a whole lot better if I could get that. You know, I'll do the one without the numpad, with the numpad. You know, as long as they're they are not the ADB version. Yeah. Yeah. I've got I've got the no numpad, numpad. I've got the actual numpad separate. I can do uh, I can do all those. I think it would be fairly easy to do because it's um I guess it's maximum two layers. I've got one here open. That, that, uh, that's a one layer board. Look. That's a one layer board. The problem yeah, is the keys. One. The problem is the keys and there is a custom chip on there. If I if you can put me on the mm. screen I can show you. I've got one. I just happen to have one open here. Dave, can you switch them around? Can you put Adam up? Yeah. yeah let me put it on my main camera here. So there's, hey, so yeah. there's a keyboard, or there's a little chip there, which is a, um, it's just some 74 logic, whatever, and then there is a, a Intel key uh, character yeah. chip that, here. Yeah, that, 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 that is the custom one. Would that um, be a character is, ROM of sorts? Yeah, I think so. Um, well, if it's, it's a ROM, I, it'd be nice to be able to copy that. I think that's probably dumped, but I can check. It's... Um, just an Intel. 
184. This is like a 16K or something it's really small. And then it's just a single layer board. Um, yeah. Now it's my shirt sure switches. Yeah, you like that? These switches on here are are um, Alps white. They're mm -hmm. the same switches in the Nabu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, that's, I mean, is there is there is there another type of switch that can be used? I mean, that's well, if you're going to design the PCB, what you could do is you could you could just change the layout of those um, vias slightly to these cherries. Exactly. That's, yeah. That was that would be my that's how I would do it. What's funny is I'm going to take this. The reason this is open is because I'm going to sacrifice this to um, make a more modern version of the Lisa keyboard, which is foam and foil, which I hate. Oh God! Um, oh Adam, don't, then, don't go sacrifice that. I have I have two that are in pieces already. I can send you the boards. You have two Lisa keyboards or Mac keyboards? Mac keyboards. Oh well, either way, because I, I want to use these keycaps. Oh okay, you want to use that? So, All right, okay. So. Um, and then I've, for testing, I've got this uh, right now. I've got this Lisa um, uh, headphone jack style connector to um, the RJ9 style adapter. And this turns uh, the, this Mac keyboard into a Lisa keyboard. So while I'm testing, oh. I don't have to worry about the chipset part of it. Hmm. Um, and then I can use these exact this, this key layout plus the numeric the external numeric keypad layout is identical to the Lisa. So I can use these keycaps and these Alps switches on a Lisa. Yeah. Yeah, because the actually Lisa keyboard is a pain with those little foam pads and foil. Well, I've got two Lisa keyboards. One I'm going to repair the foam and foil and have original, and the other one I'm going to make a new PCB with the ALP switches and the Mac encoder. Um, uh, just so I can I, have an ALP keyboard that won't fail again. Oh, well, I am already uh, underway with uh, cloning a Franklin Five Ace Five Hundred keyboard for Justin. Um, I've got, I'm up to the point where all I have to do is run uh, run the traces, and I can it'll be ready for manufacture. When I'm done with that 128 keyboard, uh, what I'll have left basically is the PCB and the chips. Mm -hmm. um, you could probably have that when I'm done if you need it. Oh, I will gladly take that for my crusade. So yeah, Joaquin, this this was I mean this is like I mean a, a PCB. Too. Just to design. I mean, it's not. It's, yeah. There we go. And try to no, see that's, the keyboards that's, that's, uh, can be actually reverse engineered. Those keyboards are expensive and they're hard to find. Um, well, yeah. In, I've, I've got all. I've, I've paid them. To, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have been lucky that I bought some for like thirty dollars, but then I paid some also almost actually one hundred and fifty. Yeah. So, I've bought several Mac Pluses that were upgraded one twenty eight or five twelves. That were broken or damaged or whatever, but they were cheap only because they came with a keyboard and mouse, not because yeah. I wanted another 512 that was had been upgraded to a plus. Yeah. Um, those CRTs end up in SE30s, and the rest of it ends up as parts on eBay. Yeah. I've had, sure. I've had a couple of keyboards where something dropped on them, and the actually PCB actually snapped. And that mm -hmm. I've had, that I have actually glued back together and make and, and actually make them work again. <laughs> Yeah. So, well, so I mean, patches and yeah, work. I, I mean, mean, if it's a single layer board, it don't yeah. work. Yeah, and I've and I've seen some that have been so actually corroded Chris. that just about every single trace was actually broken, and it wasn't worth fixing. So, uh, but yes, it 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 is a single layer. It's it, it's it's a very early board, um, and I don't think it'll be a hard thing to actual to actually remake. No, no, no. it's this is time. So. <laughs> Yeah, really, a really lot similar of to the to the Lisa PCB, other than the, the foam and foil versus switches. Um, the only real difference between the two is the controller is way different on the Lisa keyboard. Hmm. That sounds like Joe territory. Yeah, I'm more worried about that controller chip actually. Joe made the uh, uh, Dynamics uh, controller, PCB which was just, Nobody can get one of those for years. You know, I'm programming one right now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, Joe that's here on the channel, made the one for the Apple II boards. Um, Joe, what did you make? Uh, I actually have the uh, replacement keyboard encoder, 
for the Apple II Plus, the Apple IIe, the Apple IIc, the Apple IIc Plus, the Apple III, the Apple III Plus, the original Apple II with the Datanetics keyboard, and the Apple I. I have both. Where's the 80 b chip for the GPS? It's going to tell me to shut up. What? Hey, the best chip for the Apple II GS? The best chip I've ever bought. Hi, Adam. How different is that chip from the one in the, in the Plus? What? Is it this chip? Yeah. Different from what Plus? But from the Mac Plus, from uh, the keyboard. Completely different. Utterly okay. different. Plus doesn't even have ADV. It's totally unrelated. Although, no, 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 not ADV. The, the RG12, the yeah. controller chip. The, the design of this, the low-level code design, could be yeah. modified fairly easy for any matrix scanner style. Yeah. Like I could pro that that sends like just ba plain serialized data, um, yeah. like yeah. Don't like the ADB, so. It it does it would not work well for a stateful encoder like a PS2 encoder or an ADB encoder, um, because those have key down key up functionalities and all of that stuff. And the chip I use is very low on available memory. It's very cheap chip. It's like a one dollar chip. So. Hey, Dave, can you show me for a sec? Oh, uh, sure. I just wanted to point something out. The, uh, damn it, I keep putting the wrong camera on. Um, so you know these, these Apple II power supplies, they have this stupid grommet right here? See this grommet? Hmm. Yeah. This is, the best tool, this is the best tool I've ever bought. It just grabs it and undoes it in one second. Instead of fooling around with it for an hour... Um, yeah. I just fixed this. A uh, new refi. Yeah, it works. That's all. Nice. Okay. Nice. Like this one? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to get the red handle or you're not cool. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get some paint. Come on. Get some paint. <laughs> yeah, I, I get some paint for that. <laughs> These grommets, I struggled with them for years until I figured out there was actually a correct tool for taking them out. Yeah, yeah well, actually, this, this tool is uh, it's, it's for uh, removing the locks uh, when you take out bearings. So yeah. for those uh, those rings. I don't know. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the the end on yours is yeah. a little bit different than mine, but... Yeah, but you can, you can change this one, so... Yeah. Mine's called a... Um, what is it? Strain Relief Bushing Assembly Tool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all right, all right, Joaquim. I mean, I know for you it's a it is a six hour difference, and you have family and kids and that over there too. So yeah, I got to um, put the, the old one to bed now. So. Um, I'd like to thank you for taking your time to actually join us. I mean, you are welcome to stay in if you want. Um, if you no, I I, I um, have to go uh, go to so, the family now. But uh, yeah. I really appreciate the invite, and uh, I will definitely Absolutely. join again. Uh, so, and maybe not you're... next weekend, but uh, I'll, yeah. I will try. Yeah, I'll, I'll send uh, you the I'll send you the invite for the Discord Flint. I saw yours too, so I'll send that uh, if you don't mind. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, let's um, let's just keep on working on things. I know you and I will always talk because we're doing things. Uh, we're doing a couple of other projects together. So, but yeah. Um, Thank you for coming, and I'm sure everyone in the chat and anyone for us live appreciate it. And um, yeah, that's 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 it for me. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if anyone else has any closing comments. Uh, we we Martin really appreciate Posh. your take on Martin Posh and the things that you guys do over there, and what you do personally. I mean, it's amazing uh, that your basically your family is all involved with it. That's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's way. awesome. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, but yes, uh, you always have a standing invitation. Oh, God, Even if you don't get an invite, we'll get you in. Uh, we really appreciate uh, your time that you spent with us. Uh, we really do. Yeah, thank you. I, I had a blast. So, so uh, yeah. I'll see you next time. All right, sounds good. Take care. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Jim. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey,